uh, those of you who are uh, sponsors and have to give a lightning talk, if you can move here, I would appreciate it very much. But, um, well, first of all, to introduce it a little bit, um, having sponsors for academies is very important. It's what makes it possible for us to be here. Um, like it or not, it's very expensive to uh, bring people together from all over the world, and we couldn't uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without all of those lovely sponsors. And wow, I mean, look at them, how pretty they all look over there. Uh, first of all, let's start with our uh, first gold sponsor, Shell's uh, video in. We don't have audio, we should be having audio from the video, I think. Over 25 operating systems. Can we maybe play it from the start? This means you can connect to your shell from your phone. Hi, my name is Jason and I'm the CEO of Shells, a cloud-based device as a service, otherwise known as a DAS. A DAS is a service which allows you to connect to your virtual devices from anywhere in the world that has an internet connection and a browser. This means you can connect to your shell, which can have a choice of over 25 operating systems. This means you can connect to your shell from your phone, your desktop, your laptop, your smart TV, your car infotainment system, and even devices such as a smart fridge. We offer over 25 operating system choices, including many different versions of Linux, like Ubuntu and Manjaro, to privacy-centric tales. We also offer Windows and Android for those who prefer it. We partner with several Linux development teams, some of which maintain their own shell image, I meaning it comes directly from the source. This also means that should an issue arise, we can raise it directly to the development team. Our applications are open source and available on our GitHub for people to read, compile, or improve should they wish, as we have a strong involvement and bias for the FOSS community. This year, we've launched several programs as well as made significant improvements to our data centers and infrastructure. Some of the programs launched include Shells in Schools, which gives students access to shells at school and home, ensuring fast access to information and educational software. We've also launched Shells for Journalists, which allows for free privacy-centric operating systems like Tails to be used in alignment with best practices to ensure privacy and security to those who need it, whilst reporting sometimes in conflict zones. As we move into 2023, we have a host of projects and plans for building a better customer experience, infrastructure, network, and future for all. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Shells. And now uh, the video from GitHub. Hi, I'm Jesper Peterson from KDAP. I'm sorry to not be there with you this week, which I had looked much forward to, but sometimes life happens. KDAP and KDE go way back together. When Matthias Atrix sent out his email about anybody want to join me on this quest of developing a desktop environment for Linux, one of the first people was actually the founder of KDAP to reply to him. And Matthias Kelledelheimer had quite a bit of code in the very first version of KDE out there. I myself also had quite a bit of code in there. Well, that might be an exaggeration. I had some code in there, namely my K regular expression editor which I hear is not in there anymore. Anyway, as I said, I would have loved to be there this week and I had planned to be there, but unfortunately we had our yearly company meeting last week and unfortunately quite a few people got sick from COVID-19. Personally, I'm still at one bar still. I don't feel sick, so I likely ain't sick, but I didn't want to risk any of your your well-being in coming down there after being around quite a few sick people. So first of all, I urge you all to take good care of each other. I got three minutes and half of my time has already passed. I guess I don't need to explain to you who KDAB is. 
Uh, but if you don't know at all, we're a cute consultant company. We are sponsor of KDE. We are, uh, have sponsored quite a bit of work in tools like Gamma Ray and Hotspot. And if you don't know those, go and look them up right away. We also have quite a few videos online on uh, Qt and QML uh, in, on YouTube. You might be able to see my face quite a bit. And what I'm gonna tell you about today in my last minute is that we are actually hiring. So if you're looking for a job involving Qt, or QML, Qt widgets, anything around Qt, we might be a good place for you to work. And if you are asking yourself, why should I come and work with, with KDAP? Well, let me just give you a few bullet points here. So you want to work on Qt, but you also want to continue working on KDE, and I very much encourage you to do that. Well, in KDAP, we don't have that much KDE work, but we do have a good work-life balance. So you have a chance to work on KDE in your spare time. You're not gonna end up with 60 hours work week. You're gonna get a 40 hour work week and nothing more. You want to continue to grow as a developer. We can definitely help you with that. You want to work from where you actually live. Don't want to move somewhere else. And we do have remote work opportunities in KDAP. And finally, you want to make a difference in the world. We work on many very interesting projects involving especially medical. So do send me an email to careers at kdap.com do take care of yourself and each other at Academy this year. And uh, I wish you all a great conference. Yeah. Uh, thanks very, uh, very much, Jasper. And we all missed uh, all of these uh, people from KDAP that are very close to our community. And uh, now, um, Adam is going to tell us about his other hat, I believe. I was using this one, maybe. Okay. Right, so, again, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Adam from Canonical. <laughs> I'm a product manager for desktop experience. You might know Canonical for these things. Ubuntu in particular might be something you know about, but Canonical does a lot of different things as well. Here's a screenshot of the website. Take a look. Maybe your business needs some of these things. Contact us. What does Ubuntu have to do with KDE? Well, for example, you might know Kubuntu uh, with an official flavor which uses uh, KDE uh, technology. Um, there's an update to 22 uh, 10 coming soon, which will be using Plasma 5.26, I believe. Uh, the current uh, Kubuntu base is on uh, 22.04, which is an LTS release of Ubuntu. Uh, you might also know uh, the KDE Neon project, which is using the uh, LTS releases of Ubuntu as a base for, uh, for that technology. You might also know um, Canonical's product called Snapcraft, uh, which is uh, their, their app store for uh, Linux. Uh, currently, 106 uh, KDE apps are available. Uh, the most popular have tens of thousands of uh, active users. Alex actually, during his uh, goals presentation for All About the Apps, gave you even more stats about uh, how uh, Snap is important uh, to, to KDE. Um, we have a booth or a table, as it were, uh, here, so if you want to talk, uh, talk to us, uh, I'm here. Uh, Mauro is here as well, and Omar, I think, also is uh, available. So you can you can talk to us about uh, about all stuff uh, Ubuntu, Canonical, and KD. And there's some swag for you uh, there as well. So thank you very much. See you at the table and talk to us everywhere. <laughs> thank you, Adam. Vision. Round of applause. <laughs> oh. Let me get the slide deck, but you can say hi first. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Great, welcome. Hi, uh, I'm Victoria, TD Fisher on IRC. Um, I was involved in KDE about 10 years ago. I'm back. Hello. 
Um, and these are my colleagues from Ambition. We've got... Kyle Vipolik. Hi, you probably know me. I'm Eike. You've seen me today. <laughs> so we are Ambition. We are doing uh, automotive things, infotainment. We were founded in 2017. There's more than 750 digital talents in two hubs. There's one in Berlin and one in Sofia, Bulgaria. And there's more than 40 nations working at Ambition. So what we're doing, the mobi mobility world is changing and cars are pretty much computers on wheels. There's all of these things, connected cars, updatability, and all of those things that are coming. So uh, FOSS is a big part of our um, success story. So we're working hand in hand with all of these different partners and different FOSS communities. And of course, we love KDE because our tech stack is very similar to what you are all doing. So actually, we just contributed our uh, 50th contribution to KD, and I guess Ike wanted to add more on that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, this round of applause actually also goes to you. So we at Ambition, we know that um, open source is not a one-way street. And of course, we love a good street and connecting people <laughs> across distances. Um, so 50 patches in also represents a lot of your effort, um, your help in reviewing the code and improving our contributions. Um, you donated that time to us very generously. We are very appreciative. Uh, we hope that you will continue to do so because we will keep showing up with more patches. Thank you. Victoria. Uh, yeah, I guess we have another minute and 30 seconds or so. So. Uh, yeah, come work at Ambition. We're a bunch of cool people. Um, we are three out of 750 or so, as Kai said. Um, the funny thing is uh, Harold gave a cool talk earlier about taking a break from KDE. I did exactly that. And then Ika came to me last year at Academy and said, hey, would you like to get back in? And so here we are. So we're doing really cool stuff uh, with KDE, a lot of stuff with Qt. Um, our latest, biggest project we're proud of is, I'm sure people know that Quinn is an amazing Wayland compositor, can render at thousands of frames per second, but now it can render thousands of frames a second at thousands of kilometers per hour in a car because we're putting it into a car. It's great. So if you want to work on that, if you want to work on cute stuff, if you want to work on multimedia, graphics, and the next generation of in-car infotainment systems, uh, drop us a line. Check us out at ambition.io slash jobs, I think. And uh, if that URL is wrong, you can find it yourself on Google. So. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ambition. Things, close things. Not this one, this one. Kit company. Hello again. Um, I'm still Volker. You have seen a lot of slides from me yesterday, so I'm not going to present you with more than, than that. Um, earlier, I was asked how we are doing in the cute company. And I think that's something worth talking a bit about. Um, we have now been an independent company for about five years and uh, doing pretty well. And it's a lot of fun to work in a company that is doing two things. One of them, first of all, building open source technology. For me as a software engineer, it's very satisfying to work full time on an open source project, um, contribute that back, make it possible for communities like you to use our technology to do fantastic things, while at the same time also, of course, making a living from that. So um, doing that kind of thing full time is really great. Um, and we have today 150 people or so in our R&D organization in the Qt company doing that kind of thing. Of course, um, software engineering, or rather library development, is not everybody's cup of tea, let's be honest. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a special thing to do. But it's a, if you find this kind of thing interesting, then we are also hiring both in our um, Oslo site, where I am, for instance. We have teams in Berlin where we are doing very exciting things with QML, where we're doing exciting things with the web engine or the build system. Um, also different platforms we want to support there is happening in Berlin. We have a team in Northern Finland. If you like the Midnight Sun and Sauna, that might be uh, something for you to look into. So yes, we are a traditional, perhaps maybe even a little bit outdated company in respect that we are appreciating the time that we spend together in the office. Um, that is, again, not everybody's cup of tea, but if you are at that point in your career where maybe you want to 
look at somewhere else to move to, then that is something we would very much like to welcome you. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, we have been now an independent company for five years after quite an interesting ride. I think you might know a lot about that already, so I'm not going to repeat that, but uh, um, being now a, a company that is independent, profitable, and able to grow and uh, steer our own way has also in the last couple of months, of course, enabled us to make decisions that um, allow us to work, again, more on things that you are finding interesting, hopefully, like the desktop, like mobile, um, like platforms, working with the community. You saw that we now, with, uh, with Pedro, have a community manager. So I hope that we will see much more of each other in the future. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with you. I have personally very much enjoyed the Academy event, my first event. It was lots of fun, lots of interesting conversations, lots of interesting talks. So thanks for that, and thanks for welcoming me and my colleagues from the Qt company. Bye-bye. Thank you, Volker. Neil, coming up. Fedora time. So, hello, y'all. Uh, unlike you know some of the other people here, like I think I've probably bored y'all with slides earlier today. So I don't. You just get to see the lovely, newfangled Fedora logo that we launched. Uh, I think it was last year. Yeah, I think it's last year. Man, that took a couple of years to figure out. I'm very happy to have this because now I get new T-shirts, new fanciness, lots of swag. It's very cool. Um, this is my first time actually being at an academy in person. I'm. I've been to academies a couple of, a couple times with the virtual ones. It's been super awesome to meet all of y'all and like actually have a stronger connection with the KDE community. It, it's been great to put faces to names and be able to have, you know, much more uh, high bandwidth conversations and really kind of convey how much I love working with y'all in KDE development and supporting it in Fedora. Uh, and it's been very empowering and very enriching for us to be able to support um, KDE technologies within our platform. That's why we have the Fedora KDE Spin, and we launched Kinoite last year, and I'm crossing my fingers for a Fedora Mobile Edition that we may have with Plasma Mobile next year. Uh, so we're gonna do our best to provide what we can and make uh, an amazing experience for people to use and contribute to. Uh, if y'all are interested in helping us make a better KDE experience for uh, on the Fedora platform, Feel free to come by to our to our SIG and check out our booth table thing um, that's outside and and talk to me or Timothy, uh, who you know we're we're the Fedora folks that came here and uh, uh, with all that I don't really have a whole lot of other words left so uh, yep. <laughs> thank you very much Fedora will you come up. Um, so we're from Collabora, we're a consulting company, we work in embedded uh, boards, we put distros together, we go, uh, we do a lot of work on multimedia, which is streamer, and also on graphics, uh, Vulkan, uh, DRM, Mesa, all of that. Um, but basically we are an engineer company, and it's all about open source. I, I'm proud to say I'm the project manager who will check new sales opportunities and say, if there's nothing in open source interesting for us, then that we're not going to sell it. So that's something that I really like about it. And also working in the open, whenever we can, we, we try to do it in a public repository and just push it out there. So uh, since we are basically all developers, I wanted them to just talk about what they like about working here. Hey everyone, uh, maybe you know me, I'm um, Emil, I'm one of the engineers at Collabora. One of the things that strikes me the most is the flexibility to actually work on various open source projects and not only to work but to actually contribute back. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I actually have com contributed just a couple patches to KD, which kind of makes me feel bad here, but it's it's better than zero, I would imagine, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a way forward, so that's how it starts, right? Um, but apart from that, uh, personally, I have worked with Collabora on more than one dozen different open source projects to various degrees. So that's the piece that actually strikes me the most and I enjoy it the most. 
I'm Jeremy. Uh, I used to be a KDE contributor years ago. This is my second academy. My first one was 12 years ago. Uh, yeah, I know. I disappeared for a bit. Um, what I wanted to say about Collabora is that I like that the slogan or motto or whatever is open first. We definitely pursue open source contracts the most. And then the other thing is community time. Every week, every engineer gets at least two hours a week to work on whatever open source project they want to. And that's been a boon to the communities, all communities, not just KDE, but all open source communities. And uh, I appreciate that myself, so. Yeah, um, yeah all in all, what, what I like the most is we make cool stuff happen. <laughs> and yeah, like SteamOS and Steam Deck this year, I mean, I. It's a project I've been working on for three years and even more, and I'm really proud of it and how it's coming up. So it's just, I like working here. <laughs> Thank you very much for Collabora. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is George, this is Tavis, my colleague. We are actually students from the University of Macedonia, and we are uh, open source members of the community. And we're going to introduce you with a brief uh, description of our team in the university open source team. Uh, first of all, let me introduce you to Tavis, who uh, organized the open source community in Greece. Um, he acquired a good amount of knowledge in order to create an open source team. Um, he also hosted uh, the GoADEC to 2019 uh, in the University of Macedonia in an effort to uh, promote the free software in the university. Um, and then he created a, a volunteer organization. He formed a volunteer organization in order to um, strengthen this promotion of the free um, uh, software through FOSCOM, the uh, Parkhelemic uh, for, um, Conference for Open uh, and Free Communities in Greece. And this is where me and Stathis uh, met. Um, this is me, Stathis, and uh, Paris Bakalis, who created the open source team in order to more strength strengthen more and more the, um, uh, the effort for promotion of the uh, free uh, software in Greece. This is some of our events in uh, Greece, as you can see here. And here, we're very happy, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, despite the fact that we were, were a brand programming team, the software development team. The university committee actually uh, recommended us to create an open source uh, app for the students in order to, um, in order to uh, have the, a really easy access to the data because they were dispersed across the university website. And so we complied with the open source community's uh, guidelines for software development. This is uh, us in our office developing our app. This is me on these lines, yeah. This is me again. <laughs> And this is us solving an error right there. And this is the app we produce since now. Uh, we produce this in one month from July to August of 2022. And uh, they're using it now in the University of Macedonia. So uh, uh, we tend to uh, utilize open source uh, in, uh, uh, we tend to, to introduce open source to the first year students and uh, utilize it for other university students. Um, we also, uh, in order to do, the, to do that, we create the script that uh, installs all the applications for the learners in the uh, will the, um, for the following years uh, for the students. Um, and uh, there are also these features will be included in an ISO for an open source uh, to be um, to them. Um, we are pleased to have open source uh, support us, and uh, we have taken on the motto, have a lot of fun, and thank you very much, open source. This is us. Viking Software, thank you very much. Thank you. So I didn't want to just show our logo, so hopefully there'll be some random images just uh, drunk along, and we'll see if they actually do right. switch so or no, it doesn't. Then I'll just do some switching. So um, thank you for having us. When Alex uh, reached out to us some time ago and asked if we wanted to join uh, this list of sponsors, I thought, hmm, I need a reason. The first one, sponsor KDE, 
fairly good reason. There are a lot of people here who don't know me or because you're too young, I guess. <laughs> I, I was actually active in KD from 1997 to 2004. If you find really old change logs and you can see my name all over Kmail and stuff like that. And I've actually been to a lot of K at these academies. Well, two, is that a lot? This is number three, two is a lot. So uh, the first one was in 2004. I immediately I came there and then I quit my job at KDAP and then I left. And the second one was in, what, 10, nine years ago in Bilbao. I left, I met our first developer uh, at uh, the first one we ever hired at Viking Software. So um, when I thought about this, I thought, okay, maybe I can do it again. Maybe I can find the next Viking here. So. Reason number two, that was all I needed. I told my wife, who's sitting on the money in Viking Software, we have to sponsor this. So, here we are. And now, how do you become a Viking? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, so, a thousand years ago, you'd grab an ax, sail for England. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> it, it's frowned upon. Boring people out there. So, uh, instead, you have to um, do B5 things. First of all, you have to be good at remote work. I have a theory that is something that all of you have done, otherwise you probably wouldn't sit in this room. The other thing is you have to be a good Qt developer. And it's actually surprisingly hard to be in an open source uh, environment and community without being a fairly good developer. So I would assume you are. I have also assumed that you actually know a bit about Qt, maybe. Third one, Probably need a degree, master's degree in computer science, I hope, Bas bachelor maybe. There are a few that doesn't in the company or something related, but it really helps. When someone asks Viking Software to come in and help on their code, then we send experts and they assume they'll get an expert on their job because, well, I didn't tell you what Viking software do. We send people out to help customers with code. That's not important. You come here for the work. Um, but then you actually need to be sort of an expert. And that's not that easy. The fourth one is you have to work without micromanagement. You have to be able to work on your own. And I think that's also something that happens a lot here at Viking Software, uh, here at KD. So, uh, and fifth one, you have to be nice because I don't want to work with someone who's not nice, because why would I? <laughs> That's hard, all these five reasons. Maybe 1% of developers in the world, but I think in this room, it's a lot higher than 1%, and that's why I'm here. So, now there are, ooh, ah, <laughs> funny pictures. Thank you. And thank you, Vikings. Uh, next, we have Slimbook, who couldn't be there, but they asked me to remind you that there's a discount on the laptops with KD software on. So <laughs> keep that in mind if you're thinking of new hardware. But next, uh, Tomáš is going to tell us about code thing this year. Hi. So I am um, code thing this year. I was another company th a few years ago few months ago, I feel sometimes ago. And CodeThink deals with many, many things, including automotive, including also um, free desktop SDK, flat packs, and I'm sorry, I'm really tired. So we are hiring and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> they know you love it. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Tomás, and thank you, CodeThing, for sponsoring us as well. Uh, Syslimbit, uh, they couldn't be here, but also, well, say hi to Academy. And next, uh, GitLab, we have a video here. Video in. Greetings, KDE community, and thanks for this opportunity to speak with you at KDE Academy. I'm Brian Berenshausen, Senior Open Source Program Manager at GitLab, 
And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you all on hosting a great community conference. GitLab is proud to call KDE an open source partner. Communities like yours are the backbone of the open source ecosystem, and we're delighted to be able to support the great work that you're doing. If you'd like to learn more about the ways that GitLab can help open source communities grow and thrive, go to this URL here, uh, about.gitlab.com slash open source. Thanks again for letting GitLab be a part of your conference. Uh, and again, thanks for all of your hard work. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, GitLab. Next, Pine, they didn't want to come here, but they are around. Be sure to talk to them and ask all of the questions that you wanted to ask them. And thanks to all of the sponsors who cared for Academy, wanted to be here, and participated um, well by being sponsors. Thank you very much. It's very important for us.